speaker we have with us dr neto who is going to talk to us about iol iris fixation in intracapsular msics over to you dr neto for your talk Hello everyone, it is a pleasure to be here and I would like to thank Dr. Amulya Sahu and Dr. Jagannath Boramani for the kind invitation and the opportunity to be here with you once more. I will talk about IOL iris fixation in intracapsular MSICS. And why did I bring this topic? MSICS is frequently indicated in very advanced cataracts. Severe zonular compromise can be unforeseen and catch the surgeon by surprise. And the surgeon must be able to achieve a safe and effective IOL implantation in cases of total lack of capsular support. Some options of IOL fixation technique demand a special material that might not be available in unforeseen situation. Yamani technique requires a special 30 gauge needle and adequate haptic material uh, of a three piece IOL, for example. Iris claw technique, of course, requires an available iris claw, iris claw IOL in the proper diopter power. And IOL sclerofixation techniques sometimes require special microinstrumentations and special sutures. On the other hand, IOL iris fixation technique requires only a 9-0 or 10-0 proline suture and any three-piece acrylic or PMMA or single piece PMMA IOL will do. So I'm going to show you a case. It's a very mature cataract, almost a Negro cataract. And the approach is by a standard MSICS technique with only a few modifications. I apologize for uh, heavily editing the video It's a long surgery but it will serve the purpose of showing how it is done. So one modification is to do two side ports, two opposing side ports to allow for the suture time, as I will show later. In this case, the uh, crystalline lens was completely luxated. So uh, a intracap after removing the nucleus, adequate vitreous management is done. And then a three-piece IOL is implanted. In this case, I suture the tunnel to allow for a more stable anterior chamber. And then the first haptic is sucus placed in preparation for its suturing. A 10, a 10 zero proline in this case, uh, needle is passed through the iris and catching the IOL haptic under it and the suture is completely passed. And then uh, suture ends are retrieved from the side port. The suture ends are then tied and the first haptic is already fixated uh, to the iris. The other side is done then, and after in, uh, putting the second haptic in the sulcus, the needle is patched in a similar fashion, and the other haptic is then tied. So, uh, suture ends are retrieved through the other side port. And then the suture is tied and the IOL is completely fixated to the iris with the haptics in the sulcus. 
the iris is uh, the IOL is then prolapsed back, and the anterior chamber is cleaned off uh, OVD, and the surgery is uh, completed. We can see that the IOL is uh, perfectly centered. It's a very satisfying technique to use in these cases. So I'll show now some IOL anatomic relationships and the technique of suturing in this uh, technique of IOL fixation. So here is a cross section of the anterior segment and uh, I'm highlighting the profiles of the cornea, iris, and ciliary border, body for better understanding. An uh, supus placed IOL is then shown, and uh, I'll show the detail of the correct uh, IOL haptic uh, positioning in the supus. This is most important in this technique. So I'll show now how the suturing is done. And we are going to make a cross section on the iris mid periphery or uh, where the suture is passed. So you can see the IOL haptic under the iris and the needle is passed first in a horizontal fashion and then it is posteriorly directed and passed through the iris and under the IOL haptic. The needle is then uh, anteriorly uh, directed and we can see uh, the tip of the needle tainting the iris, uh, allowing us to judge the correct placement of the surgery. The needle is then horizontally placed and passed through the other side of the cornea and the suture is already in place. <clears throat> now, the suture endings are retrieved with a uh, Kuglen hook or similar instrument through this uh, 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 side port of the, uh, at the superior place over the, the suture, and then the knot is tied and the, the haptic is secured to the iris. I'm going now to show an important detail of the placement of the IOL haptic. After a few weeks, some fibrotic tissue is formed and the haptic is deeply embedded in the uh, ciliary sucus. So we do not need more, uh, uh, the suture uh, anymore to sustain the IOL in place. So there is no concern of future suture degradation as the IOL is securely placed in the sucus. Some advantage of this technique, uh, it ensures a good IOL positioning with a circle support, which is very important. So the load of the uh, IOL in the iris is minimal. The suture only ensures that the IOL stays in place for the first weeks. It is easy to perform once mastered. But there are some disadvantages also, also, of course. It has a steep learning curve. It needs a good iris, uh, which uh, can't be a traffic friable or with missing parts. And some argue that it might not be the best indication in young patients due to inflammatory, uh, potential inflammatory issues. <laughs> So my message is the surgeon must be proficient in a variety of IOL fixation techniques. Chance favors the prepared mind. Thank you very much for your attention and the opportunity to be here once again with you all my friends.